So recently I came across this really cool effect where the player walks through a portal and it smoothly transitions from one world to another. Today we'll be using render textures, a custom shader and some math to achieve this effect. Also this video is sponsored by Udemy. Udemy is a great site for learning new skills and they have a bunch of really cool courses on making games. I've previously mentioned the ultimate guide to game development with Unity which is a great course made in collaboration with Unity themselves. If you haven't already definitely check that out. But Udemy actually has a bunch more cool courses to offer. One of the ones that I really enjoyed is called Learn to Code by Making Games. It takes you from complete beginner to having a solid understanding of Unity and C Sharp programming. On top of that, it's made by Ben Tristam, who is just really fun to learn from. So to get started, simply click the link in the description and get a site-wide discount along the way. And with that, let's get into the video. So basically the way that we are achieving this effect in the editor is by creating two worlds that we run side by side. If I go here and dock my game view, you can see what I'm talking about. In our scene we can see that we have two worlds, one orange and one green. In the left one we have the player and if we move him around we can see him moving in the world. In the right one we have a camera. This camera is going to mimic the position and rotation of our player but in the other world. And we're basically just taking whatever this camera sees and cutting out a chunk the size of our portal and displaying it on a plane. So that's basically what's happening. Then as soon as we move through the portal, our player switches to the other world and you can now see another camera over here in the first world that does the exact same thing. And because we're using a plane to render this when we go and move around the portal, it's invisible because planes are only rendered on one side. In fact, if I go into the scene here, go into world B and find my portal, you can see that I have a render plane here which is just set up with an ordinary material. And this material just shows whatever the camera is seeing over here in our first world. This is what we call a render texture and that's basically how we're going to set up this effect. So now that we understand how it works, let's try and do it ourselves. So basically this is what I started with. I've created two worlds which are basically just a bunch of cubes. And I've put all of these cubes in the world as you can see inside two master objects, one called world underscore A, another one called world underscore B. And I've taken world underscore B and moved it over in relation to world A by 32 units. But you can move this as far away as you want to. It really doesn't matter. We just want to make sure that the player only can see one world at a time. So right now if I go ahead and play the game you can see that I have my FPS controller and I'm able to move around. But of course I see nothing in the portal and if I move through it nothing really happens. So let's change that. Before we start actually moving the player, let's make our portal actually look cool. And let's start by doing this in world A. So in here I've created a portal, this is just an empty game object, as well as another empty game object which just stores all of our graphics, which are just three cubes stacked on top of each other. So there's really nothing here. I have however made sure that the pivot of my portal is pretty much in the center. Now we can go and right click on our portal, and let's create a 3D object, and you will select plane. And we get this big fat white plane. Let's start by rotating this negative 90 degrees on the X and let's use the scale tool to fit this to our portal. You don't have to get it exactly right. I'm going to do 0.21 by 0.3 by 0.3 and I think that fits nicely. Then let's rename this plane to render plane and this is where we'll be displaying the other world. That also means that we don't need a mesh collider so we'll remove that and we actually want to move this plane back a bit into the far side of the portal. Let's change the position on the Z to 0.5. Next we want to set up a material for this render plane. So let's go to the project, right click, go create, material, and let's call this camera mat because it's going to be displaying what our camera sees and let's do underscore B because we're going to be displaying what the camera sees in world B. Let's then go to a render plane and drag that in there. But in order to display something from world B, we need another camera. So let's go to our player object and take the player camera from here. I'm just going to use this because we want the same skybox and post processing settings. Let's duplicate it, move it out, and I'm going to rename this to camera underscore B. Let's then center it in our world. I'm just going to put it at the same position as the portal. So that's zero by two by zero. And let's move it over to world B. So that means in my case, I'm going to offset it by 32 on the X. So this is going to be camera B. I don't want this to be tagged as main camera, so I'm going to untag it. So down here we can see what the camera is seeing. But how do we put that onto a material? Well, you guessed it. That's of course using a render texture. So let's go to our project, right click, go create. 
Let's select render texture. Let's call it camera texture underscore B. And now we can select our camera B and under the target texture field, we'll drag in our new render texture. So now you should see that if we select our camera texture B, the texture looks like what our camera sees. And if we now go to our camera mat B and drag in our render texture on the albedo channel, this now gets displayed on our plane. Of course, it's currently distorted. It has lighting applied onto it and it's very low resolution, but hey, at least it kind of works. So let's go ahead and fix these different issues. The first one is that the shader we're using is completely wrong. We can't really use the standard shader for this. The reason why is we don't actually want to preview the entire texture. We don't want to have everything that the second camera sees be displayed on this portal. Now we actually only want a cutout of this. What I mean by this is if we imagine we take camera B here and we pull it out to a position of the player, maybe the player is looking up a bit and a bit to the left here. Now we don't want to take this entire camera preview, this entire image and put it in here. Instead, what we want to do is we want to take only the part that we see through the portal. So only this tiny part here and put that onto this texture. In other words, we want a cut out of the image. Now this might sound really difficult, but it's actually really simple. And I've gone ahead and created a shader that does exactly this. I of course have a link where you can download this in the description. So let's take this into Unity. And without going into detail about shader writing, basically we're discording the UVs of the object and instead we're using our screen coordinates. If you want to know more about shaders, definitely let me know in the comments down below and I might do a separate video on the topic. But for now, we'll just use it as is. So on our camera mat B, we'll change the shader to our new unlit screen cutout shader. And you can already see this acting much, much differently. Now what gets displayed on the cube depends on where it is on the screen. And that's exactly what we want. So let's go ahead and undo all of the changes to camera B here. And let's now make a script that will take camera B and have it follow the position of our player in relation to its own portal. To do that, we'll hit add component and we'll create a script called portal camera. We'll of course choose C sharp, hit create and add. Let's open this up in Visual Studio. Now here we first need to set up a few references. So I'll go public transform. And first we need a reference to the player camera because that's what we're going to be following around. So player camera. We'll also need a reference to the portal that this camera belongs to. So public transform portal as well as a reference to the other portal which the player is currently close to because we need to know the player's position relative to his portal in order to calculate this camera's position relative to this portal. So we'll create a public transform other portal as well. Now in our update method we first want to get the player's offset from his portal. So we'll go vector 3 player offset from portal and set it equal to the player camera's position, so player camera dot position minus the other portal's position, so other portal dot position. And this should be the offset. We can then set our current position, so this portal camera's position equal to our portal's position, so portal dot position plus the offset, so plus player offset from portal. And it's actually that easy. If we go and save now, go into Unity, first drag in our player camera. Then our portal, so that's portal B, which is in here. Then the other portal, so that's portal A, which is in here. And I should actually go ahead and name these so it's clear when we drag them in. I'll just quickly do that. So now we can see that our portal is portal B and the other portal is portal A. And now when we play, we might get a few warnings saying that there are multiple audio listeners in the scene. That's just because we need to go ahead and remove the audio listener from this camera. And if I now dock these two side by side, we should see that the camera moves around with the player and indeed it does. So when we look through the portal, we are actually already getting a really cool looking through the portal effect. It's still very distorted and it definitely has some mistakes, but we have definitely introduced perspective through the portal. However, if I go ahead and rotate my camera, the illusion kind of breaks. That's because our player's camera is rotating, but as you can see right here, camera B is not. So we need to also offset the rotation. To do that, we go back in our script. We'll make a few lines. And first we need to get the angular difference between the two portal rotations. And we'll store this as a float. So we'll get the angular difference between portal rotations. And we'll set this equal to quaternion.angle. And the first rotation is going to be the portal's rotation. So portal.rotation. 
and then the other portal's rotation, so other portal dot rotation. So that's the angular difference in rotation. We can then get the portal rotational difference as a quaternion, so we'll go quaternion portal rotational difference equals quaternion dot angle axis. And as you can see, angle axis creates a rotation which rotates x amount of degrees around a certain axis. In our case, we have the amount of degrees right here, and we just need to specify an axis. So the amount of degrees is going to be the angular difference between the two rotations, and the axis is going to be vector 3 dot up. Now if you aren't confused enough already, we now need to get the direction that we need to face in. So we'll create a vector 3 with the new camera direction, and this is going to be the portal rotational difference that we just calculated, multiplied with the player cameras, forward vector. So this should now give us a vector which is the direction that we need to point this camera. And so finally we just need to turn that into a rotation. So transform dot rotation will set our rotation to quaternion dot look rotation to a rotation that looks towards our new camera direction. And we want the vector 3 dot up to be the up vector. And that is definitely a lot of rotational calculation. And I completely understand if you don't get this right away. Quaternions and rotations can definitely be really hard to grasp. But it should work. So if we now save this and hit play inside of Unity, we can see that camera B rotates accordingly. And that it now works much nicer when we rotate and look through the portal. We are still getting a few weird issues. We can see some of the portal sides that doesn't look too good and it feels that the two views aren't totally synced. The reason for this is that our camera texture B is not set up to be the same size as our screen because we can't really know beforehand how big our game view is going to be. Therefore, when we start the game, we want to set this up through code. To do that, let's go and create a new empty object. Let's move this to the top. Let's reset it and let's call it something like game manager. Here we can do all of our setup. Let's add a new component to this and let's call it portal texture setup. Let's hit create and add and let's open it up. Now here we're not going to be using our update method, but we do want to use the start method. But first we need a few references. We need a public camera, which is going to access our camera B as well as a public material which is going to be the material for camera B. So camera mat B. Then when the game starts, we want to check if camera B already has a target texture. So if it already has a render texture assigned, which means it is not equal to null, well then we want to remove that texture. We do that by going camera B dot target texture dot release. Now that we are sure the camera is cleared, we can go camera B dot target texture and set it equal to a new render texture. So we're basically just creating a render texture through code. And here we can set the dimensions. So we of course want the width of the render texture to be screen dot width, the height to be screen dot height. And then we can set the depth of the texture, which we'll just set to 24. So now that we've created a render texture and set our camera to render to that texture, we can take this texture and feed it into our material. So we'll set camera mat b dot main texture, equal to camera B dot target texture. And there we go. If we now save this, go into Unity and reference first camera B, then camera mat B and hit play. We can see that as soon as we play the game, the texture on the plane becomes really, really crisp. And we now no longer get this weird offsetting. That's because Unity has recognized the size of our game view and it's gone ahead and automatically created a render texture for camera mat B. You can see if we go ahead and click on it here, with the appropriate size. And this render texture is not visible anywhere because it's created at runtime behind the scenes, but it is definitely there. This also means that we can just go ahead and take our camera texture B and remove it because we're creating this automatically when we play. Awesome. So that's actually it for the first part of this tutorial, being able to look through the portal. And if I go behind the portal, you can see that because we're using the plane, it disappears. But now we need a method of safely transporting the player to the other world. To do that, we need a separate plane. So let's go under world A, go to our portal and select our render plane. Now this is all set up correctly, but we need a collider that will trigger whenever a player walks into it. To do that, let's duplicate the render plane. Let's remove the mesh renderer, the mesh filter. Let's rename it to collider plane. And let's add a new component, which is going to be a box collider. Now we can reset the scale here and start changing the size. So first let's bump this up on the X, bump it up on the Z as well. 
to make it fit. I'm just going to make it two by three and I'm going to set the Y to zero. We don't want this box to have any width. I am, however, going to move it forward. So it's in front of the render plane because I don't want an instance where our player will actually walk through the render plane before we get teleported and see what's behind our portal here. That's just not going to look good. So I'm going to set the Z here to zero. So it's half a unit in front of the render plane. I found that works pretty well. I'm then going to mark our box collider as a trigger. And now we're ready to create another script. This is going to be the portal teleporter script. Let's say create an ad and open it up. We can remove the start method. And instead we need a reference to the player. So public transform player, as well as a reference to the receiving portal, because we need to know where we should send our player. So we'll create a public transform and call it receiver. And before we send our player anywhere, we need to know whether or not the player is colliding with the portal. To do that, we use void on trigger enter. This method is of course called whenever something enters the trigger. And we can gather some information about the object that enters by writing collider. And let's call it other. So other of course refers to the other object we are colliding with. And we need to make sure that this other object is actually a player. So we need to check if other.tag is equal to player. And if it is, well then the portal and the player is overlapping. So let's go ahead and create a private boolean called player is overlapping and set it equal to false by default. However, if this is true, we'll set player is overlapping to true. We also need to determine when the player is not overlapping anymore, in which case we'll go void on trigger exit. Again, we'll take in a collider other if other.tag is equal to player when then the player has left the portal. So player is overlapping is false. And now inside of our update method, we know whenever the player is overlapping. So we can say if the player is overlapping, well then we want to use the dot product. And let me show you why. So we have a portal as well as a player that wants to enter it. But we need to make sure that the player is entering the portal from the right side. Because from behind we're not drawing the portal. And so we don't want to teleport the player if he walks into it from behind. To check if the player is coming from the right side, we use the dot product. That means that we get a vector that points upwards from the portal. So we'll call this portal up. And we also create a vector that's pointing towards the player. So we'll call that player. Between these two vectors, there is an angle. And since the dot product is calculated using the cosine of this angle between these two vectors, we can use it to determine where our player is in relation to the portal. We can do this because the cosine to a angle less than 90 is positive, whereas the cosine to an angle greater than 90 is negative. And if we have a look at an instance where our player has gone through the portal and has passed to the other side, the angle between these two vectors is definitely going to be greater than 90. And so the cosine to that angle is going to be less than zero. And so is the dot product. Now, what does this mean for us in code? Well, it means that we can take the dot product. So we can write float dot product, which is going to be equal to vector three dot dot between the up vector of our portal. So transform dot up and a vector pointing from the portal to the player. To do that, we get a vector three, which we'll call portal to player and set equal to player dot position minus the portals position. So transform dot position. And we'll then just put that in here. So we get a dot product between transform dot up and the portal to player. And we can then check if the dot product is less than zero. If this is true, the player has moved across the portal. And so we want to teleport him. And of course, here we need to do a bit of offsetting of the position and rotation as well. First off, we need to get the difference in rotation. So we'll create a float rotation difference and set it equal to quaternion dot angle. We want to use the rotation of our portal as well as the rotation of the receiving portal. So this is the difference in rotation between the two portals. And we want to make sure to reverse that. We'll then add 180 degrees on top of that. So we'll go rotation difference plus equals 180. And that's because if we have a look at our two portals, we want them to be flipped. So here we want to be able to enter from this side. And here we want him to go out from this side. And so we also want him to enter from this side. So you can see that's flipped by exactly 180 degrees if we do it properly. Cool, so finally we can take our player and rotate him around the ob axis, so vector3.ob, by our rotation difference. And it's teleport there. So now we're rotating him properly, now we can also actually move him. To do that we create a vector3, which is going to be the position offset. 
And this is the current offset between the player and the portal. So player dot position minus the portal's position. And as you can see, we've actually calculated this once before right up here. So we don't need to do that again. However, we do want to make sure that when we apply our position offset, it also gets rotated. So we'll calculate quaternion dot Euler. So here we create a rotation that rotates zero degrees around the X rotation difference around the Y and zero degrees on the Z. And we'll multiply this with our portal to player vector. So now finally, we can set our player's position equal to receiver dot position plus our position offset. And of course, once we've teleported him, we are no longer overlapping. So player is overlapping is again, false. Whew. All right, if you got through that, you're amazing. Congratulations. Now we should be able to select our collider plane. And under here, we have two empty slots, one for the player. We can drag him in there and one for the receiver. And this should actually be a separate collider plane on the other portal. But instead of creating that from scratch, I'm actually just going to take the render plane and collider plane right here and duplicate them by hitting control D. I'm then going to move them to the second portal B here. And I'm just going to take all of their positions on the X here and zero those out. So that should actually snap them right over to the other portal here. All we want to do is make sure to kind of flip everything. So we'll take our render plane and we'll move that by negative 0.5 as well as rotate it around the Z by 180. There we go. So now it's pointing out here and it's at the back of the portal. And we'll also take our collider plane and rotate that by 180 as well. And we don't want these to be named something with one. We can just go ahead and do that. So now we can take our collider plane for portal A and drag as the receiver the collider plane for portal B as well as take the collider plane for portal B and drag as the receiver the collider plane for portal A. And now, ladies and gentlemen, if we press play, we should be able to rock right through the portal. And here, over here, it looks kind of weird. I know that, but that's because we haven't set up the rendering for this portal, but we are actually able to walk through it. So there we go. So now we simply need to also set up rendering for the other portal here. And we've actually done this before. So it's simply a matter of duplicating everything. We can go ahead and duplicate camera B here and call this one, of course, camera A. And this one we want to zero on the X and not be moved by 32. So it's right over here in the center of the other portal. For this portal camera, the player camera is going to be the same, but the portal is going to be now portal A. So we'll drag in portal A. And the other portal is going to be portal B. So we'll drag in portal B. We're just reversing the two. Finally, we can go to our game manager and here we need to make our portal texture setup also set up the textures for camera A. So we'll just duplicate this. I very quickly copy some code. So we'll create another camera here for camera A, another material for camera mat A, as well as all of this code down here. But instead of camera B, we're now referring camera A. So camera A dot target texture. There we go. And camera A dot main texture is equal to camera A dot target texture. There we go. Make sure to replace everything or else it's going to look really weird. Let's save that, head into Unity and we get two empty fields. Let's drag in camera A as well as camera mat A, which we still need to create. So let's duplicate camera mat B and rename it to camera mat underscore A. And remember, we don't need to set anything up here because the texture is inserted procedurally. So we'll just select our game manager and drag it in as is. And now I think it's actually going to fully work this time. So if we switch into game view, all right, that's not quite working. And that is because we need to take the depth of both camera A and B and decrease it to make sure that our standard camera always renders on top. This won't be a problem when you play the game, but it's just annoying when you're in the editor. Whoops, I actually forgot one thing, and that is we also need to go into world B under the render plane here and change the camera mat to A. That needs to be swapped out as well to make sure that it's not displaying what camera B is showing, but what camera A is showing. And now if we maximize our game view and press play, we can see that we can look through the portal, we can walk around it, nothing happens, and we can try and go through the portal. And now we're in world B and we can look back into world A and we can actually go right back into that. So that's it. 
Yay! So that's pretty much it for this video. Again, definitely check out the many awesome courses over at Udemy. Simply click the link in the description to get a discount. On that, thanks for watching and I will see you in the next video. Thanks to all the awesome Patreon supporters who donated in December and a special thanks to Judaman, Befio, Infinity PBR, Uri Omer, Hans Hoftoon, Cyborg Mummy, Derek Heemskirk, Murr, Faisal Marify, Beard or Die, Double Tap 45, James P, Dan Evans, Thomas Wally, Superman the Great, John Beauregard, Cole Cabral, Jason Latito, Alex Rakitsky, Suni Jacobson, James Rogers, Robert Bund, Rob Fan, and Erasmus.